Wonder presents Dinah Shore. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Monsieur Payan. And now, here is your hostess, Dinah Orr. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now, to our transcribed drama, Monsieur Payen, featuring Edgar Barrier in the title role. If you were to draw a line across the map of Indochina, connecting Hanoi, the northern capital, to the nearby port city of Haiphong, you would notice that about 40 miles south of that line's midpoint, there's a third city, a place called Nam Din. Early last July, while its two neighbors to the north looked on helplessly, Nam Din became the first large city in the Red River Delta to fall to the communists. By then it was too late for Hanoi or Haiphong to do anything but resign themselves to the inevitable. But for the rest of the free world, there is still time, although less than we may think, to profit from the bitter lesson learned by at least one of the people of Nam Din during that city's last hours of freedom. Monsieur Payet? Oh, yes, sir. Colonel Bailo for you on the phone, sir. Oh, thank you. I'll take it in the study. Jack? It's just the phone on it. But our guest... Yeah, I'll be back in a moment. It's Colonel Bailo. Isn't he coming? I don't know. I'll be right back. Hello? Oh, yes, Paul. No, no, most of them just arrived. Will you still be coming? No, you soldiers, what is it now? Have to polish your boots? <laughs> All right, Paul, as soon as you can. Yes, we'll be waiting for you. Bye. Uh, Mr. Payan. Mr. Gregg, enjoying yourself? Very much, thanks. Um, I was uh, wondering if I could speak to you for a moment. By all means. It's about uh, Colonel Baylor. Yes. I overheard you say he was on the phone. That's right. Or would you mind telling me if he's coming here tonight? But he said he would try to later. Why? Well, there was a rumor going around to the press club today, just a rumor. Yeah, about what? That the French Union forces were pulling out of this part of the Delta. I just wondered if Colonel Bailot might have said something about it. Uh, no, no, he didn't. Uh, do you think the rumor is true? Well, I tried to do a little quiet checking at headquarters. Didn't get anywhere. I see. Whatever it's doing, the security is pretty tight. Oh, yes. Well, we, we'd better get back to the party, huh? Sure. Uh, Mr. Gregg, yes? if, if it were true that our forces were evacuating this area, would that be all the soldiers? I imagine so. And, uh, and after they had gone, the communists would just walk in and take over? Well, uh, who'd stop them? Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Oh, I, I thought they'd never go. Jacques. Yes, dear. Is something on your mind? No, I'm. No, I'm just tired. Jacques. Yeah, I'm just tired. That's all. It's got something to do with the phone call from Colonel Balo, hasn't it? No, no. It, it, he was just busy. That's why he couldn't come. He. Ah. All right. Now it's just a rumor. But Mr. Gregg said there is talk of withdrawing our troops from this part of the Delta. Where did he hear that? At the press club. Nothing official, of course. It can't be possible. Well, let's not fool ourselves. It's quite possible. For eight years, this has been a dirty little war, 
something almost beneath our attention. Now it's coming home to roost. But uh, at least we'd be given notice. We are French citizens. Even so. They have to. Before we left, there will be so much to attend to. Annette, I have been... Who can that be? One of the guests may have forgotten something. Horn will answer it. No, I sent him to bed. I'll get it. Jacques. Paul, come in. We'd almost given you up. I can only stay a minute. Who is it, Jacques? Colonel Bailo. Will you accept my apologies, Madame Payen? I could not get away sooner. Of course, Colonel. What will it be, brandy? I am afraid I will not have time, Jacques. I'm due back at headquarters in half an hour. Oh? Is anything wrong, Colonel? That is what I came to tell you. We are pulling out. If we had heard the rumor... It is true. Armor, troops, everything. When will you leave? It has already started. There was no other way. But if the new premier should reach a settlement at Geneva... That is part of the thinking. This is a, a redeployment plan to make us stronger, to give our negotiators something with which to bargain. And we become stronger by running away. Annette. I, I cannot blame you for that, madame. But yes, tactically, running away will make us stronger. We can get out of these static pillbox defenses and regroup in the open. At least, that is the idea. Paul, we have lost already. Haven't we? I'm afraid so, Jacques. Do you expect much more fighting? Not much, I do not think. Not to speak of. And then? Oh, our people at Geneva will fix up something. I do not know. We should have fought them harder. We waited too long. We did the best we could with what we had. We didn't have enough. Not enough of anything. Not will. Not courage. It is not that simple, madame. It seems simple to me. Uh, Annette, please. It's too late to win anything here but an argument. Now let's keep our heads. As you wish. But what do we do now? That is one of the reasons I have come to see you. By tomorrow, a plan for air evacuation to Hanoi will be in operation. For civilians? Yes. I have spoken to one of the Vietnamese officials who will be in charge of priorities. He will take care of you. When? He has promised to make space for you on one of the flights tomorrow evening. Yeah, I presume he will expect some reward for that consideration. No doubt. What difference does it make if we can get out of here? Paul, when do you expect the withdrawal to be completed? Of the troops? Yes. By late tomorrow night, possibly early morning of the day after. And the communists, when will they come? As soon as we have gone. The forward elements are in contact with us at this moment. Jacques... Why are you asking? Because I want to know how long my cotton mill will be out of operation. What do you mean? I mean that if your troops are gone by tomorrow and the communists arrive the very next day, I should lose no more than three days of work. Jacques! You... you are not thinking of staying here. I have been thinking of it all night. Where else is there to go? We can get to Hanoi. And then what? In another month, the communists will be there. But not before you have gone. There are four flights a day to Saigon. And after that, where? Back to France and a new start. Others have done it. Mm -hmm. Not at my age, Paul. No. Jacques, I'm afraid to stay here. Now, Annette, where else can we go? Twenty-two years of work, worry and sweat have put into that mill. But what if they don't let you keep it? They need textiles. They are desperate for them. And... You would stay and work for them? Who helps the enemy more, Paul? The businessman who stays or the soldier who runs away? I have tried to explain, Jacques. Of course, Paul, and so have I. But as both of us know, honorable behavior needs no explanation. What we are doing is sound military strategy. Just as my decision is sound economic strategy. You will regret it. Jacques, they may put us in prison. Take everything we own. I think not. And I'm willing to risk it. But do you think it's fair, asking your wife to stay here? I have no intention that she shall, at least not for the present. I won't leave without you. You will take the plane for Hanoi tomorrow night. No. Yes, Annette. And in a week, two at the most, I will send for you. I won't go. I won't. <laughs> Come now. It won't be for long. Now, you mustn't worry. <laughs> If I go, 
I'll never see you again. I know that. Don't talk nonsense. <laughs> you can make the arrangements, Paul? They are all made for both of you. You may cancel mine. Jack, <laughs> think it over. I have. I'm staying. <laughs> Hello? Oh, good morning, Monsieur Leon. Yes, yes, I remember the order. The, what's that? Cancel it? No, look, that cloth was a special job. We... Well, I am very sorry to hear you are leaving, but... Of course I am staying in business. Do you think... Hello? Monsieur Leon? Hello, hello? matter with everyone you would think. Come in. Monsieur Payal? Oh, yes, Tran. I have just come from the mill. Most of the men are leaving. You told them we would stay in operation. They do not believe you can. They are frightened. And you, Tran? Are you frightened too? Very much, sir. But you will stay in Namdil? I will stay. Good fellow. Now, how many men would you say have left us so far this morning? Nearly 200, but another 50 did not even come to work. Oh, stupid fools. They are frightened. But how are they going to live? There won't be any jobs where they are going. They do not care. They will not work for the communists. Tran, didn't you tell me your brother was fighting with the Vietnam forces? Yes, sir. He was killed a few months ago. Then how do you feel about working for them? I take what comes, sir. Yes, that is becoming my philosophy. Well, I suppose it's useless to finish out the day if there aren't enough people to mend the looms. You might as well send the others home and close up. Yes, sir. I'll be having lunch at the Barbaratania till about two. After that, you can reach me at home. Very well, sir. Madame Payen is taking the plane to Hanoi tonight. I expect she'll be back in a few weeks. And you are staying? Of course. Because of the mill. What other reason could I have? What if it should be destroyed or dismantled and taken away by the communists? You would have stayed for nothing. Well, I am gambling they'll need it here. And if they do not? Then, like you, Tran, I will take what comes. <laughs> Victor! Victor, open up! Victor! We are closed, not serving today. Victor, it's Jacques Payen, open up! What do you mean, you're closed? I did not recognize your voice. Come on in. What's going on? You taking a holiday? A long one. I have sold the cafe. No. To whom? Some fool who thinks he can do business with the communists. Come on. Greg and I are having a farewell drink at the bar. The American newspaper man? Yes, yes, you know him. Hey, Victor, who was it, the Gestapo? A friend and an old customer. Oh, how are you, Mr. Greg? Well, well, Monsieur Payan. Glad to see you. And please, no jokes about the Gestapo. All of a sudden, they are not funny anymore. No offense, Victor, buddy, no offense. Uh, by the way, Monsieur Payan, nice party last night. Uh, thank you. Uh, Victor tells me he's selling the place. Sold, sold. It is a thing done. And well done. Well done indeed. Let's have another round on the new owner, Vic. Mm. Uh, Monsieur Payne? Nothing, thanks. Uh, I don't suppose I could get lunch. Uh, the cook has gone, left last night, sorry. Uh, same for you, Mr. Greg. More of the same. Put a stick in it. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised you're leaving, Victor. You had a fine business here. It would not be fine for long. Uh, here you are. Very good. Why are you so sure of that? <laughs> you have never lived under them, have you? Uh, the communists. Are they so much different from any other conquerors? Different? They are like no other conquerors in the world. I saw how they operated in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And I was working in a cafe in Prague when they took over six years ago. Pretty bad? No. No, not at first. That is the fascinating thing about them. They take their time. They can afford to. And they use that time to convince you they are going to make life Heaven on earth for you. And because we live in an imperfect world... But of course... There's always something wrong when they take over. Oh, and how they use it and use it. 
It may not be much, but they will convince you it is the most important thing in the world. And they will fix it. Uh, like the flies in China. The flies? Oh, didn't you hear about that? No. The communists have driven all the flies out of China. Every one of them. It is now a paradise. No flies left. Only slaves. I like to think the flies took one look around them and flew off of their own will. <laughs> to, to Formosa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, but, but even so, Victor, to sell your restaurant. If I could not sell it, I would have given it away. It's all you can do. There is no living with such people. Then you think that a man, if the fruits of his labor, the labor of a lifetime, happen to be in a country that falls to the communists... You think he should abandon them? Yes. Well, I, I can't agree. It is true, then. What? You are staying behind to keep the mill open? I don't know what else to do. All right. You look at me, both of you. Now, you, Greg, your business is where you go with your typewriter. I'm not handing down any judgments. And you, Victor, your pockets are bulging with how many thousand francs that you got for this place? Less than a quarter of what it is worth. But enough for a new start, anyway. Uh, perhaps. Yes. And what would I leave here with? Nothing? The clothes on my back? Look, uh, you don't have to explain. I am a what? Christian. I try to live like one. I go to church on Sunday. I hate communism, but... But I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do anymore. I know one thing. You cannot compromise with them. It's easy for you to talk principles. I am not talking with principles. With your pockets bulging. I I'm talking facts. You've got to draw a line and say, no more. I am willing to draw a line. It is all they understand. All right. But where? Where do you draw this line? Where do you stop? Now, Mr. Gregg, you have watched them. You have seen them all over the world. There has to be an answer. Where does compromise become surrender? I think it's like Victor says. In what way? With them, compromise is surrender. Jack? Yes, dear? What time is it? It's just past eight. We'll be at the airport in plenty of time. You... You won't change your mind about going with me? Annette, we have been all over this. I know. But this evening at dinner, you seem trying to decide something. No, no, it wasn't that. What was it then? I, I'm not even sure. I guess I'm just starting to feel ashamed and I don't know what to do about it. Ashamed? What have you to be ashamed of? Oh, of being asleep at the switch. Too complacent, too selfish, too, too everything. Why are you turning off here? I thought I'd drive by the mill. It's just a few blocks out of the way. Huh. How empty the streets are. Yes. I watched the people leaving this afternoon. Thousands of them. Where will they go? Hanoi, if they're lucky. Seems people are always running nowadays. Always running from something. Yes. Sometimes I think that is the way the world will end. All of us running, running, running. Oh, Jack! No, I, I just want to go into the middle for a moment. You frightened me. I'm sorry, Annette. I almost drove right by it. Do you want me to go in with you? No, no, I'll only be a few minutes. You stay here. Is anything wrong, Jacques? Yes. Yes, something is very wrong, Annette. Jacques? Yeah, I'll be right back. My mill, 22 years. And this is what I have to show for it. Four walls, rows of machinery, shadows, echoes, darkness. Except that it's not a mill anymore. 
It's a tomb. All the while I was building it, it was a tomb. And I didn't know it. Everything good I might have done, or been, is buried here. Oh, what happens to us? We always think someone else will do it. Someone else will do the fighting and the dying. Someone far away that we don't know, won't miss. And then we finally learn the truth. Each of us must fight. And it doesn't matter that we may lose the first battle. It doesn't matter that what some of us do is futile or hopeless or too little and too late. It only matters that we fight. That in whatever way we can, and no matter what it costs us, we fight back. Monsieur Payan? Tron, what are you doing here? I thought you were taking Madame to the airport. Yeah, I am. I just came by to have a look around. What are you doing here at this hour? I was preparing to do some work uh, for the communists. For the communists? Stay where you are, Monsieur Payan. What are you doing with that gun? Just making certain you will not interrupt me. I don't understand. Of course you do not, Monsieur Payan. All you have ever understood is your loom. Natran, listen. For eight years, my country has been bleeding to death. And you stood by wondering what all the fuss was about. I was wrong. I know that, Tron. Yes. Now you know it. Because the communists are coming to take your mill. No. It's more than that. Is it? Did you know you were wrong when you refused us our freedom? Did you know that? I know it now. And the times you treated us like fools? Yes. Yes, I guess I knew it. But that did not stop you. Tran, are you a communist? Because I said I was going to do some work for them? Yes, I will do some work for them. But not the kind you had in mind. Not running their looms. Not making shirts for their backs and socks for their feet. You see this crowbar? Yes. Now watch. This is the kind of work I will do for them on your loom. Work like this and this and this until there is not a spindle or shuttle left. Why do not you try to stop me, Monsieur Payer? Try it. And if I did? No. I don't believe it, Tron. I don't believe you'd kill me. You aren't a murderer. Get out. Get out. I intend to. Bring back your police. By the time they get By here... By the time I... they get here, you will have destroyed no more than a dozen looms at most. What? And they will not really be destroyed, only damaged. This one you just hit. I could have it running in an hour. What are you saying? There is only one way to destroy machinery like this, Tron. You must burn it. Burn it? And not just any kind of fire will do. The cloth will catch of itself. But the machinery needs to be soaked with something highly inflammable. Monsieur Payan. Like that coal oil we have stored in the back shed. And also, there must be a draft, a good strong one. Perhaps if you were to open wide the loading doors... I do not understand, monsieur. It's really quite simple. Come along. I'll show you. You did not bring any baggage, Jacques? No. As a matter of fact... I didn't have time to pack. Jacques, they're starting to board the plane. Now you go ahead, dear. I want to speak to Paul for a moment. I will escort Madame to the plane, Monsieur Payan. Thank you, Tron. Thank you, sir. And good luck. I'll need it. Well, Paul, 
Jacques Tuan has told me about the mill. Well, they would have taken it away from me anyway. Now neither of us gets it. That is not why you destroyed it. No? No. Well, perhaps it was not quite that simple. What will you do now? Go back to France? No. I'll go to Hanoi. And then if they force us out of there, I fall. And after that, Saigon. But what will you do? Well, I'll fight. Not with guns. It's too late for me to do that. But I know now how to beat them. It looks like everyone is aboard. Goodbye, Paul. Goodbye, Jacques. And pray for us. We'll win. Wait and see. For a time we may lose. But we'll fight. And we'll pray. And you wait and see, Paul. We'll win. This is Donna Shore again. You know, there's something wonderful about a library in your home. Now, I don't mean collector's items or first editions with uncut pages and all done up in cellophane, but friendly books, books that become dog-eared from fond handling and warm companionships, books that grow better with reading and rereading. Yes, that's the wonderful thing about a library. It's selective. You can choose as companions all the best minds of every age. Summon them at will. Aristotle, Shakespeare, Socrates, Cicero, Dante, or... Milton will share your quiet evening. You can listen while George Washington bids farewell to his troops or hear Abe Lincoln teach the true meaning of democracy. Yes, a library is selective. You can choose your friends, and they will give you help and counsel and many wise words. But even more selective is prayer. By prayer, we invite God into our homes. He is the bidden guest. We speak to him and hear his answers in our hearts. We tell him our troubles and get his guidance. Books have much wisdom, and heaven knows we need wisdom in our time. But by prayer we go directly to the fount of wisdom, for God is wisdom uncreated. And remember, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Monsieur Payam. Dinah Shore was your hostess. Edgar Barrier was featured in the title role. Others in our cast were Jeanette Nolan, Vic Perrin, Ted DeCorsia, Jan Arvan, and Jack Crucian. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Summer Replacement, starring Una Merkel. Desi Arnaz will be your host. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.